Today I want to show you how to do cross hatching with ruler quilting. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts and today I am working on a project that was done on New Year's Eve with So Steady. So Kate Quinn and Janelle McAdams were two of the educators who were presenting projects during that live session and I'm working on the project that Danelle was doing. So it involves some cross hatching. So I've done part of the project already, but you know, cross hatching means you have stitching going one way and stitching going the other way. So I am at the going the other way part. And so I wanted to explain how this all works. So I've got my piece of fabric here and I have some fusible fleece on the back of it. You could use batting. You could actually just have your whole quilt sandwich together. But for this particular project I was working on, I needed to have fusible fleece. So that's why that's on there. And then I took a friction pen and I marked a cross on the two diagonals because I'm doing that type of cross hatching kind of diagonal. It's going to be a circle shape, so I'm not sure exactly how things are going to look uh, when it's all finished. But you could also, you know, just draw from the top and across at 90 degree angles if you wanted to do it in that way. And as I mentioned, I've already done part of the project, so I've already done some stitching going across. But before I get into showing you how you get the other direction going, I want to explain some of the tools that I'm using to do that. So one of the tools I'm using is this ruler. It's a SoBiz centering ruler and it's actually made by Donnell McAdams. And so this ruler is has lots of different uses for it. It's not necessarily used for ruler quilting, but I'm going to use it for that and I'll explain why I can do that and how I'm using it. But you can see that it goes from 0 to 12. It's a 12, 12 and a half actually, 12 and a half inch ruler. And there's also a zero to six on both sides here. So you could put it in the center and measure out six inches or less, whatever you need to measure. And there's also lots of different marking lines, both horizontally and vertical on this ruler. So it's really handy for lots of different measuring purposes. And as I mentioned, I'm using it today for ruler quilting. Now, how can I do that? Well, because it's thick enough that I can do that. Your acrylic rulers aren't, but this one is. So I can use this on my domestic sewing machine. The Genomi M7 is what I'm using today, and it works really, really well. Now I've made a few adjustments to this ruler, or I should say an adjustment to this ruler, and that is that I've added some stable tape to the back of it. Now stable tape is an adhesive, uh, grippy type material. It reminds me of drawer liners and it's made by So Steady. So if you check the description below, you'll see links both to the ruler and to the stable tape. I like using this product for a number of reasons. First off, I can take it off and move it around on my templates because sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I need to move it to different positions. And where that should be is underneath where you usually have your hand position on the ruler to keep it nice and steady and secure on your fabric. Usually I would not have that on this ruler because when I'm measuring, I want to be able to move it around easily, right? So the nice thing again about the stable tape is once I'm done with this purpose for it, I can take that off and it's good to go for just a measuring ruler, okay? The other thing I really like about this particular ruler is its color. So you can see it's this bright neon color. And why I like that is because I can see the markings when I put it down on light color fabric and on dark color fabric something I can't always do with other rulers. So I really like it for that. I never have any problem seeing the lines on this ruler. But now let's talk about using this ruler for ruler quilting. The project I'm working on has spacing of three quarters of an inch between each of the quilted lines. Now, when you're ruler quilting, this always seems to be the issue with people or the, the questions people ask or the problems they get into is, how do I know what line on the ruler to use when I want to quilt, you know, X number of inches or part of inches between my quilted lines. So in this case, three quarters of an inch. Well, most ruler feet, I'm not going to say all, but certainly the So Steady ruler feet and the one on this Janome M7, the spacing is a quarter of an inch between the needle and the edge of that ruler foot. So I've already got a quarter of an inch. So if I need to get three quarters of an inch, what added to a quarter inch equals three quarters of an inch? So it sounds like we're in elementary school math, doesn't it? But the answer is half an inch. So on my ruler, I will be using the half inch line plus the ruler foot to give me three quarters of an inch spacing between my lines. Okay, so we're good on that, right? Now, I mentioned to you I've already done some of the quilting and you can see that here where I've got the three quarters of an inch going back and forth. Uh, quilted lines, I should say, going back and forth. So I started in the center, I did one side, 
then I went back and did the other side, okay? So now I need to change direction, right? Because cross hatching is lines going across each other. And I'm going to go and use this line that I've got on the center going in the other direction. And the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna stitch right down that line, okay? Now, how am I going to do that with my ruler? Because if I put my ruler against it, you know, it's gonna move it out with my ruler foot. It's gonna move it over a quarter of an inch and I don't want that and I don't have a minus quarter on this ruler. So I can't do that, but there is a way to do it and that involves another tool from So Steady and that is their spacing gauge. Okay, now this might be hard for you to see. I don't know because it's clear. Okay, maybe I should put it on the green ruler. Can you see it any better? I'm not sure anyway, but it's clear. They come in other colors now. Uh, when I got mine, it was just clear but I think I might want to get one of the other colors. Of course, it'll be hard to decide which one, but anyway, I digress. Look in the description below for a link to the spacing gauge. It's very handy for a lot of different purposes, but especially for ruler quilting. And so what I want to do, when I'm starting in that center and I need to be right on a drawn line, what I want to do is I want to take my needle and I want to drop it right down on that line. And I like to use my hand wheel for that. And I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread. Okay, and get those threads out of the way. I don't want to quilt over those. So remember I said I don't have a minus quarter on my ruler. So lining it up, you know, what am I going to line it with? I got nothing to line it up with. Well, this is where the spacing gauge comes in handy. Spacing gauge has all these different spaces on it. A half inch, eighth of an inch, one inch, and the ever popular one quarter inch, which is what we want to use. So I'm going to put my foot down. Okay, I'll make sure it's down there. It's not down all the way, right? Because we're ruler quilting, which is basically free motion quilting with rulers. And I'm going to take my quarter inch and stand it right up there, okay? To move it up so you can see. So I'm lining it up across, or against, I should say, the line, and then I'm going to butt that ruler right up against it, okay? And I will move down and do that further along. You may, probably cannot see that very easily, but trust me, that's what I'm doing, okay? So now I know my ruler is lined up a quarter inch away from that line. When I stitch with the ruler foot, we know the ruler foot adds a quarter, so it comes out to zero basically, or on the line, okay? So let's get started, let's do some stitching. Okay, I've got my pesky thread just following me along. I should have clipped them off, right? Okay, it doesn't cause any problems. So I've gone as far as I can. I need to readjust my ruler, which means I need my spacing gauge again. Okay, so my spacing gauge comes up. I'm going to line that up. Okay, make sure that ruler is nice and lined up there, and then we can continue on. All right, so I'm just going to continue on along my line there, making sure my ruler is always nicely lined up. So I'm going to get that stitching exactly where I want it. And then when I come to the end, I'm gonna show you how you use the ruler to go and stitch the next line, which we want three quarters of an inch away from the first one. And by the way, you may have noticed that I am not stitching all the way out to the edges because this project is going to be circular, so I don't need to do that. I just need to be outside that circle. That's what that line is you see there. So whenever you're cross hatching, you may be in a block, you may be doing a whole background, so you just need to make sure that you continue out as far as you need to on your particular project. All right, so there we go. We've got our line there all stitched down, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Now we need to go back up to the top again. All right, so it's a lot of stitching with, you know, back straight line stitching back and forth. But this is a great way to practice your ruler quilting, right? With a straight edged ruler, which is probably what you're gonna start with anyway, right? Most of the time we're ruler quilting, we'll start with that straight edge ruler. It's the easiest one to start with. And it's always a good tool to have in your ruler quilting arsenal. Okay, so now we wanna go back up to the top and now we definitely need some guidance, don't we? So let's take a look at the ruler. I'm gonna move it around the other way, and we're gonna find that half inch line. So, you know, nothing, zero, a quarter, half. Okay, so we're gonna line that up. Now, I do not need my stitching gauge now, right? I don't need that because I've got a stitch line to use. So I'm sorry, but away it goes for now, okay? 
It's a really handy tool, actually. I use it all the time when I'm really quilting. And we're going to go outside the circle and start again, right? So we're going to, always what I do is I like to drop my foot down and then move that foot over to the ruler, okay? We don't want to drop the foot on the ruler, right? And of course, we always bring up our bobbin thread. And I'm going to move my ruler away. And you're going to go, oh my goodness, you moved the ruler away. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to just put it right back again after I've locked my stitches, okay? Not a concern at all. Okay, I'm going to increase my speed just a little bit here. Let's get that ruler over there too. Okay, now I want to line it up here. And so I'm mostly concerned with it being lined up inside the circle, right? And I'm a little over actually, a little bit more over. So I'm just going to pick up my foot and just align my ruler a bit better. Put that foot down again and move it over. Okay, all right. So now I can just stitch along again. Here we go. So as I'm stitching, I'm making sure that I'm pressing the ruler against the foot, or the foot against the ruler really is what it is. And I'm also pressing down a little bit, not very much. If you press down like with a death grip, you won't be able to move the quilt sandwich along, okay? So if you're finding you're really struggling to do that, try and release your grip on that ruler, and that'll probably help. All right. Just to save time, I'm just cutting my stitches instead of locking them. Okay, so you can see that we're moving along, okay? We've got a cross hatch already going, okay? So I just need to keep moving across the quilt sandwich, and of course, I'm going to be using that half inch line on my ruler again. So we're gonna come out here, we're gonna put that foot down, move it over, bring up the bobbin thread. You could pull out more thread than I do. It's not like I couldn't pull out more. I just tend to just leave it at whatever it ends up with. And I'm gonna lock my stitches. And stitch along again. One thing I should mention to you, much like free motion quilting, when you stop, make sure your needle is down in the fabric. And if you notice that you're starting to wander off the line, you can just stop and just, you know, slide your ruler over a little bit, readjust. And trust me, if you're off just a little tiny bit, no one will notice. And for heaven's sakes, don't point it out to them. Okay. <laughs> So you can see we're starting to develop our crosshatch. It's kind of exciting, actually. It gives lots of texture to your project, which is fun. Okay, we're somewhere around that vicinity. Okay, put down the foot, bring it over, bring up that bobbin thread with hopefully more thread than I do. But it's working. <laughs> it's working. Okay, so I'm going to continue on this side and finish this off, and then I can show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'll see you in a few minutes. So there is one half of the circle all done. So I think you can see the gorgeous texture that cross hatching gives. And when I have it set up in the project, it's going to be like this. It's going to be on a diagonal. I'm not sure which is better for you to see that, but maybe even like that. But I tell you where you can really see what's happening is on the back side here where you can see all the orange stitching there. So I still have to finish the other side before I'm ready to use this in the project. And of course, there's more to do with that project. But I've got to say, I really like doing this cross hatching with a ruler, with ruler quilting. So I mentioned at the beginning, I tell you why I like that. Well, a number of reasons. First off, it's very accurate. So if I'm using a walking foot, I have nothing uh, that's guiding me except the previously stitched line. If I tend to be out a little bit with that, you know, as I go along, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So I find the ruler quilting, uh, using the ruler, I should say, is a little bit more accurate that way. And also, 
if I'm already doing a ruler quilting project or even free motion quilting project, I've already got my machine set up for that. So instead of having to change everything up and go to a walking foot, I can just continue with the same setup I have. So I like that as well. So if you've never tried cross hatching and you want to try some ruler quilting and want to practice your ruler quilting, try ruler quilting with the SoBiz centering ruler or with another straight edge ruler. And I'm sure you'll find that your ruler quilting will quickly improve, especially if you're doing as many lines as I am. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your quilting friends. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.